Hey, it's Flobo Boys, host of New Amsterdam Radio, the crown jewel, if you will, the New Amsterdam Entertainment Network. But that wasn't always the case. You know, when I first started out this podcast, I had so many questions. How do I get started? How do I distribute my podcast? And frankly, my whole life changed when I found Anchor.fm. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. And best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And now Anchor can match with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid to podcast right away. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now by reading this ad. That's paying the bills, ladies and gentlemen. Anchor.fm. I can't wait for you to launch yours. And when you do, tag a brother. I want to hear it. Let's go. Welcome citizens, you're listening to New Amsterdam Radio, the podcast for creatives. Here, thinkers and doers always have a key to the city. The mayor is in, so office hours start now. From the top of the skyline to the city streets, New Amsterdam Radio starts now. Hey, it's Flobo Boys, it's hanging out, creating the content that I enjoy creating and hopefully you enjoy consuming. You know, this is what I do. This is what I love. Uh, if you guys have not followed me personally on the social media networks, make sure you do at Flobo Boys on Twitter and at Flobito on Instagram. I'll be having my talk with Nicole Magellan in just a second. But I just want to say thank you so much for tuning into the show. I thank you every week because I know you have many, many options for your podcast entertainment and entertainment in general. The fact you're spending some time with me is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for ways to support the show, you can do that in two ways. You can hit up the Patreon, patreon.com slash Flobo Boys. So become a member of the Boisterous crew and get access to show notes and galleries and unabridged interviews and even exclusive shows in the new Amsterdam radio canon. Oh, you can also buy a new Amsterdam t-shirt at flobito.threadless.com. That's F-L-O-B-I-T-O, flobito.threadless.com. Cool designs there from the DJ side of yours truly and the new Amsterdam side of yours truly. Go there, visit, get something like t-shirts, mugs, masks. It's all there. Um, Again, I want to make this show the best show possible. And the fact you're tuning into that puts me just a little bit closer to that goal. So without any further ado, my talk with Nicole Magley. Welcome back to New Amsterdam Radio, the podcast for creatives. It is I, Football Boys, the mayor in the mayor's office, having the time of my life. And my guest today is not only a thinker, but a doer. You see, not only is she an avid reader, not only is she a stand-up comedian, not only is she a filmmaker, and not only is she a licensed esthetician, she does all of those and is a nice person as well. Please welcome pretty funny Nicole. Nicole Majley, how you doing? Hello. So good to see you. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. Last so, time I saw you was at the haha. Oh yes, because you had the uh the open mic there on Monday nights. Yeah. Yeah, I used yeah. to host yeah, comedy. Yeah, that was uh, I, I've tried hosting comedy shows. Uh, you did the Lord's work because I, 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 I it wears it down after a while. It wears it down. I don't know how'd you do it. Like what was your approach? <laughs> like the the personalities in the comedy scene here in LA. Uh, any experiences from your time at Haha? I earned my, you know. <laughs> It was like, I, I don't know. It was just so interesting. You know, they don't, um, it was like, they just disregard you, that group that was there like in the beginning. And then there were a few that saw, I didn't put up with stuff and, you know, yeah. I just had to stand my ground. And, uh, and then it was, they were, they ended up being a bunch of nice people and I liked a lot of them. Yeah, I used to do a show at, at Flappers, uh, very similar. You would, you would, you know, make sure you are basically a traffic cop anyway, getting short comedians to get on stage to work on their craft. And the audience is either bored or surly or sometimes they're captive, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not. And this the personalities because everyone thinks they're either a bigger star than they are <laughs> or they have like, I demand to go at this time. It became a lot like I feel running a comedy show and driving Uber is very similar as to the kind of customer service you have to do to make that work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So 
I got to start this off with a cliche podcast question, so forgive me. I actually don't know the answer to this question. Um, how long have you been doing comedy and how did you get started? I I love that story. My cat is coughing up a hairball right now. I hope your cat's okay. What's your cat's name? <laughs> Gidget. Oh, oh, that's cute. Aww. If you trying to focus my hair, the <laughs> No, I mean, hey, if my, if my show is not cat approved, I'll understand. <laughs> I told you the question was cliche, Gidget. I'm so sorry. I can't get something better. But, 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 but seriously. I, uh, um, yeah. yeah, rude. Co- okay, so I got into comedy out of blowing a big audition. You know, I was always an actor first and I tell people it's because it's, you know, people think it was just easy for me. I could not do this. This is, it's scary. It scared me to death. I never dreamed of doing this. I enjoyed it, but um, never did I think I had the confidence for this. And I did it out of fear. And so after I blew this choked up in a really big audition, it was for Hallmark, basically had a part written for me. Okay. (laughs) get it so um i just tell that to people to give them you know inspiration that it happens and oh or inspiration to not watch hallmark movies probably like that's true <laughs> over nicole I sw- no, i'm just kidding You're- yeah like like you know all actors we all blow auditions and we all have these horror stories and hopefully one day i'm telling it on you know <laughs> network tv or at the oscar yeah. or something but um I was like, I just, because I was living in Michigan, so we didn't have the opportunity we do here in LA. And so I just didn't have the experience. And I just went, this can never happen again. I want to be ready. So something told me that if I took a stand up class, if I did stand up once, I'd be cured, you know? So I took this class, I couldn't even commit on the phone. I was like, and the woman was actually like, you don't have to do the show if you don't want to. I'm like, no, I have to do the show. That's the whole point. You know, I want to do this. So yeah. so basically, I did it out of fear and to conquer that fear, because I really believe if something terrifies you, you know, you don't grow out of comfort. And and then after that first show, getting those laughs, it's addictive. It yeah. totally is, yeah. Yeah. What year was this? Where did you just start? I, I, th- I want to say 2012. Okay. 2011 or 2012. And, and your first class was in Michigan? Mm-hmm. And you're from Michigan? I'm from L.A. Oh, wait. What? Because I see you doing big things in, these, in like both sides of the country. In L.A., mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, wow, Pretty Funny Nicole is here. And then in Michigan, oh, man, Pretty Funny Nicole is there. So you go back and forth. But you're from L.A. originally. Yeah, born and raised. Wow, originals are a rare thing. As someone who's a transplant myself, <laughs> I think people from LA are the okay, coolest. You're from the know. East Coast. I'm from Brooklyn. You can tell. Let's go Mets. Right. Uh, here, my poster on the right. wall. I remember you guys talking in class. Yeah, uh, uh, Logan and I were like yep. the, New York, the New York boys. Uh, yeah, you know, LA original people, people from LA original are like the nicest, most warmest people I've ever met. It's transplants like us who ruin LA for everybody else. Yeah. And I know this too. It's all like, we, we suck. Normal. Yeah. Some yeah. do. <laughs> so so, so back, to, back to the comedy thing. So you try this out in Michigan. I've heard that LA and then New York and even Chicago to a lesser extent are just hard towns based on the number of people practicing the craft and other towns like Michigan or other states like Michigan or Iowa or the Midwest or the Canada are easier. Is that true or is it a stereotype? Uh, okay. Is, is it, is it harder there? Yeah. Like, is it, is it hard? Is it harder outside of the big cities like New York and LA where we get these influx of everyone thinking they're funny? <laughs> I think it's harder because you don't have as much. That's where okay. it started. It was like it was like there was two clubs really, and, you know. Maybe I, there was three at the time, and I don't know. You know, here, what's cool is you know everywhere you go, you meet artists, and you know there's a million opportunities. So it's harder because yeah, it's very limited. So I but I got I got in at a club, and and they just let me come in. I'm still friends with them. I felt 
filmed half the movie there, but, mm -hmm. but I worked. I, you know, again, you work, work, work. I have no problem ever starting and just, you know, showing up, showing up, showing up, which yeah. some people don't do that. Sure. I think it's going to happen. Yeah, I think that the the fame police is gonna knock on your door and say, "Hey, you, you're famous now. Come with us." Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not the case. How do you approach your craft, though? I know there's like different ways of writing jokes, or like wh how do you make sure when you craft your comedy uh, that it's authentically you? It's every every joke I write is basically something that just happened, and you're just like, ah, in fact. It was something we were supposed to write, and I can't remember. You know, it's, you just kind of write something. You just have a thought. They're always they're nonstop. They're always yeah. coming. Yeah. I have tried. I've tried these coaches. I've tried classes. I've tried like groups to sit with you know writers, and it doesn't always work. It just for me they and I hear this from musicians like they just change it. They're like. Oh, you should add this, this, and this, and it's like, mm, no, that's not even at all where I was going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you uh, know. <laughs> yeah, I'm in a similar situation. For for me, the classes because we did come classes together. You know, I I started my comedy. I hate to use the word journey. I think journey is overused. But I started my comedy experience in 2014 uh, at Adam Barnhart's comedy school, the Clown School, Clown House. Excuse me. And uh, we've done some classes after the fact there. And I like the fact the classes tell me, bro, Tuesdays, 10 p.m. to 1, you're doing comedy. Uh, but the actual notes you get sometimes are kind of like, oh, I'm not going <laughs> to I'm not gonna do that at all. What? You don't know me, man. So I, I can relate. Yes, exactly. I get that a lot. I miss that class that was... That was therapy, you know, it was like a whole different, I don't know, that, that was just a different type. So that was, and that was just such a, I'm so grateful we had that and I really miss our group. Can, can we talk about this a little bit? Cause I know it's kind of like, like um, privileged information, but it's still kind of open in the same way. Uh, at, at Adam's classes, he did this thing called clearing where you would get on stage and talk about what's on your mind first. Um, stemming from the fact that Adam uh, is a homosexual and he did comedy at a time where that was unaccepted and he opened for like artists like Andrew Dice Clay who were like the opposite of that and he said just saying what was on my mind helped me to put me in the moment which I loved because we heard it was like therapy in that we talked about what was wrong with us first or what happened to us not wrong, what was wrong with us uh, and, and, <laughs> like I got back problems <laughs> Yeah, well, this is what I, I want to talk to you about because I always felt that when you cleared, you went through and continue to go through it a lot uh, with your family, with your health, uh, but you still came every week and you still produced. And I was like, wow, this is so strong. I always want to tell you that, but I know that there's some creeps in our class. I want you to be like, oh, I got to creep too. But, but like the fact that these things happen to you and you still decide to choose the light side of life, which I thought was pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No worries. No you, I, I, I have such a, I forget, and I'm supposed to still be writing. My goal was to finish this book this month, but then I, Nicole does a lot, and Nicole just joined another <laughs> acting class. Like, it's like, I can't say no. So, um, it just anything, like procrastination, but I, you know, you saying that, it just reminds me. Things start going fine. I've been alone for a while now. I got my own home, and it's like, I forget. And I, the writing comes from pain. Comedy comes from pain, you know. And God, just hearing that, you do remind me because sometimes I'm like, I, I need to remember these things what I've overcome. And I remember we, I go to comedy and just sit there and cry. And cry. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was just that was my happy place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are tears of joy. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, it's, I miss him. Yeah, he, I, I do. He, amazing he did change my life and i hope that I can be able to pay it forward or pay it back in some mm -hmm. way and sometimes but you mentioned a book let's talk about it like what's the name of the book what's the book about what can i read said book i'm not giving the name away yet fair, fair. i don't fair. tell people because it's cute and i don't want anybody taking it oh yeah no it's smart <laughs> um but 
uh, it's been, you know, that last podcast that you're going to also talk about, he got me inspired again. Cause I just, I honestly, I'll be honest, I didn't write much in 2020. Mm-hmm. I just don't like to go back to that. You know, um, it's a book I started probably almost 10 years ago. And I just went, wow, I have, I've lived, I just lived through so much that, I thought, you know, everybody has a story. Everybody's gotten through stuff. But the more I talk to people, they're like, "Mm, not that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It's just you. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, you know, and then I, you know, it all crazy how it happens, you know. And then once I was sober, which is also the same. I got sober eight months after I started comedy. So I think it was 2012. Okay. Um. Fortunately, because I'm like, at least I held, you know, I feel like I'm a respectable comic. I, they, I, I tell the owner at one of the clubs, you never had to see me carried out, you know, on my. Right. So, um, yeah, but it started as a serious book. Then when I started comedy, I'm like, I just started changing. I, just, I was no longer ashamed of the things I did. And I started going, this has everything Hollywood likes, you know, mm-hmm. um, I don't always say all this, but like I, I will now. But it was like the adult entertainment, the, the addiction, the the comedy, the acting, you know, the, the sugar daddies. Like, hmm. yeah, hey, might as well start, you know. So but, this is actually a memoir or like a fictional, a refictionalized. Oh, no, it's or true. It's all okay. true. And yeah. um. The, the, but the heart of it is to inspire people. Just like I share the story of how I got into comedy. You know, I try to tell people it was because I failed. You know, I, I did it because I was not, you know, I want to uplift people. I want to give them hope, you know, because yeah. I used to live people when they found out and it was, it was after a lot that went on where I had to come forward and tell people where I was. I mean, I lost my driver's license. And I had to tell people I couldn't hide that one anymore because I was going to lose it for over a year right. in Michigan. And, you know, a whole the group of friends really stepped up. People that I thought were way too busy were the ones that really helped me. And I just broke down. And it was like, it's these hard times. Like what people are going through right now, that's mm-hmm. where you change. This is where you make the changes that will you know, we don't, I always say we don't change when everything's going good, you know, and I was getting whisked off to France or whatever, and the islands, the Caribbean, and, yeah. and that's not what made me change. The change is when you are struggling. And like, even when this whole pandemic happened, I, I was not, I didn't take it hard. I'm just like, good things are coming. Good things yeah. are change, people. I think things in the world are happening and I'm not saying I don't have ups and downs, but, um, I hope a lot of good comes from this. There was a commercial about the, uh, the Dosa Keys beer commercials from like 10 years ago with the most interesting man in the world. And the idea was like, if you guys don't know, the idea was this person was improbable and had all these like facts about him. But there was one that stuck with me uh, where like he's sitting in this like suit in the back of the bar and the camera pushes in on him and he's like, it's never too late to start beefing up your obituary. I was like, yeah, he's right. <laughs> the beer guy's right. <laughs> you know, like, why not live the life that you want? And yeah, there'd be mistakes or regrets, but, you know, you have the life worth reading about or writing about, as Benjamin Franklin would say, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah. I, I will not judge anyone for living or at least trying out something and being like, okay, that was cool. I'm moving on. But that was cool. Uh, well, I, well, that came from two though. everybody, oh my God, I hear it and I still hear it. And I talk about that all the time, but a lot of people just look at me like everything was easy and, oh, and yeah. no ideas of my background. And you saw like some of the stuff I was even going through and I still go through pain every day, but you know, I'm just like, eh, you know, so it's, it's really to help people and just go. You could, I, I was there too. And even in the addiction, like, you know, sometimes it with Adam comes to, we'd go to, with Logan, we go to the um, midnight mission and do comedy. And, yeah. you know, nobody knows what a dark place I was in with that part too. So I want to help people go, you know, you never see yourself getting out, but I'm out and I'm living the life I never thought 
I would, you know, so it can happen for anybody. It's interesting you mentioned the Midnight Mission. So for those who are not familiar, the Midnight Mission is a very comprehensive organization. I'm not sure if they're only in Los Angeles, but they're definitely heavily based in Los Angeles where they help uh, the unsheltered. Uh, then sometimes monthly they have like these these variety shows, uh, comedy and music, where the people can join in and have their own little segments too. Whereas they'll bring in comics to like pad out the runtime. And I went once, and I wish I could go back more, but I had just quit my la- my final day job. Like this is like post recession. It took me forever to find work. I didn't like the job I did, and I quit. And I said, I'm perhaps um, disrespectfully, I'm gonna be out in the street. Like I always said. And I got invited to go to the Midnight Mission, and it changed my life. It put things in a lot of perspective of why we do comedy. Yes, there's like, at least to me, there was a feeling of adoration. I'm like, you still got it. Off level, you're amazing. You're taking all the love. But for a lot of people, like, this was a highlight to come out and sing a song they wanted to, or to see a comic who was like nearby and not in this giant arena, you know, cross town for how much dollars for a ticket. And I really enjoyed my time there. So yeah, the Midnight Mission, they're, they're good people for sure. Mm-hmm. I remember because I, you know, I joke about, you know, co- to me, comedy's healing because I go anytime something really bothers me, I make a joke about it, you know, whether that's somebody or <laughs> left the monster. And I was like, can I do my cocaine jokes here? Can I? They're like, just anything goes. Yeah. Well, it hit. I mean, it was, uh, the hall was just laughing because I did point out I was sober with them, you know, right. and I encouraged them. But at the end, I remember, you know, these, they came up to me with these like eyes, like, are you really sober? They're like, I'm, you know, eight days sober, you know, and I know that, you know, and I'm like, one day at a time, you know, just one day, it's yeah. today. So, Oh, it just, you know, it's every, any of us, it's just one day. And I know, I know if I, I, I tell people, I, I don't want to taste your wine. I would, I would drink until I never felt anything again, which is that why I understand people when they relapse, they overdose because mm-hmm. you can't desensitize again the way you used to. So uh, you had mentioned this before that you were uh uh, on a podcast called Any Given Runway, which I recommend if you want to hear more about Pretty Funny Nicole, uh, check it out after this one. And speaking of food, you had mentioned your diet, and you said, "Hey, look, you have the things you enjoy. Uh, sometimes you cringe at what people make their decisions, their choices when they eat." Now I have two questions: one, what does a typical food day look like for Nicole? And two, what's the most cringe-worthy thing someone can eat? Oh, uh, I it's just some of the stuff we grew up with and the cellophane wrappers, you know, like it just shocks me what people still eat. Yeah. Um, I'm watching. <laughs> this is so funny. The yeah. com- I'm laughing because comics made fun of me. I just I did do a little writers group this weekend and we joke about Netflix where everybody's binging Netflix. And I'm, you know, everyone wants to know what you're watching. I am watching a, a, an old show called What's Happening. Oh, wow, the original one, not, not the what's happening now. Okay, yeah, it's a classic. How dare they make fun of you? How dare they? Yeah. But like back then, it was like he was eating a ding dong yesterday on the show. Like, yeah. And and the burgers and the grape soda, you know, stuff like that. I'm like, whoo. <laughs> chemicals, you know. Make your teeth sweat, yeah. Chemicals and poison, you know, but... um. Yeah, so like all those old things that we didn't know better, but when I still see them, that um, shocks me. My, you know, I, I have family that still eats a cup of soup. Right. You know? What What does a, a day look yeah. like for you? Huh? What does a, a day look like? What is a, a Nicole diet? So I can take notes. I want to be uh, as felt. <laughs> I juice things. I like fruits and vegetables. Um, I'm bad. I have, I have my weaknesses. So I always say, pick your poison. Just don't make everything poison. You know, like I, I'm a chips and a popcorn girl, like, um, and I, I do eat sweets, like, but a vegan cause I can't do dairy. So, you know, I do all the vegan ice cream cheese. They I found the cheesecake, um, junk, but it's very little, you know, yeah. 
but um, fresh. I like, I, I eat meat. I, I basically eat vegan, but I eat meat. <laughs> wait, wait, what? <laughs> Is that no not dairy. the most cardinal real of veganism? <laughs> no, no dairy, no eggs. Okay. But meat. So everyone's like, are you vegan? I'm like, no. Like, I love the vegan salad at um, Cheesecake Factory. But then I'm like, and I want a piece of chicken on there. <laughs> That it's sounds like paleo to me. <laughs> it's, I think it's close. Okay. I don't know what's, except for like what paleo, you don't do carbs or. Uh, I mean, well, yeah, you try to stay away from carbs, but, but yeah. But it seems like very old world, kind of an old world diet. If it didn't exist 150 years ago, you don't eat it. You know, kind of a thing. I like that. Exactly. I eat a lot of like, I buy, I make things. Like I soak beans. I, I don't do cans. I don't do. You know, um, I, I soak them. I like beans and lentils and real food, you know. Vegan plus meat. I'll write that down. I got to look that up to see what diet that is. Well, because I can't do, I don't like dairy. I don't do dairy anymore. I think it breaks you out and I break mm -hmm. out. Um, it, may, it knocks me out. So I, I tell people, listen to your body and we're all different. So what's good for me isn't good for you, you know. So I just, I tell people just to listen to your body. If you feel like you need to take a nap after something you ate, it's probably something, you know, you're sensitive to. Oh, that's like advice for life. Half my diet, but advice for life. Uh, yeah, I'm like energy should, it should give you energy. It's fuel. So that, that actually makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't thought of it that way. But yeah, if, if I take a nap afterwards, so Thanksgiving days, buffets, if they're so open, it's a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> What would we do? One more, like um, fuel. I, I just always say food either feeds or fights disease. So before I put things in my mouth, I'm like, is this really, you know, whether it's arthritis or anything, you know, there's I'm like yeah. your food is a lot. Yeah. But ask me in a week because I'm seeing an integrative doctor and he just took me off everything I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you know it's always good though to have like check-ins with the the professionals that can adjust your diet for you. That's always I'm like he's overdoing a good thing. He's yeah. like stop all that right now. Right. He's like vegan plus meat. What's that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you had mentioned that that dairy breaks you out, uh, which I thought was interesting of a note because you are a licensed esthetician, which I had to look up to see how to pronounce this, which is like the the science of skincare. And you've leaned into this as a side career or is this the main career? Like, tell me more about it. Growing up in LA, I wanted to be an actress, but I, w I didn't have the, the guts. Like I really didn't pursue it. And I started out immediately like at 18 as a makeup artist. And then, and then it grew into skincare. So I've been like, but meanwhile, I was stripping on the side. <laughs> so I was right. like, Going to school for esthetician, but I was even, in fact, it was one of my dancer friends who told me about it. So it was like, I was living two lives. If I had the body, I'll do it too. I have, there's no judgments here. I swear to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not as glamorous. It was fun. Don't regret it. I was, I was insane, but um, it's, it was a real dark, dark, dark. Sure. I don't glamorize it in my book because even though I thought I was living the life and it was great, um, no morals or whatever. And, uh, there's a dark side, you know, I tell, I don't, I don't want to glamorize it like Hollywood glamorizes a lot of things that I think are actually, we're losing, you know, substance. Right. Uh, I saw people, you know, divorces, you know, cheating, deaths. They're, I'd come to work and, you know, a girl who had driven home drunk died. You know, my old roommate was the manager and he blew his brains out, you know. Yeah like just darkness a lot of darkness that comes so well um, i appreciate the sliver of insight i wouldn't even think about the consequences you know you kind of think of like the job itself and not what it can lead to yeah yeah there, there there's there has to be something missing i don't know you just can't i i i think now even though for a while i was like hey they're just prudes everyone's just prudes you know this is fun and then after a while, you start to see, I was like, wow, this is not healthy. Yeah. You know, it's not a healthy world. So again, another inspiring is getting out. 
you know, yeah. getting out and living a new life. Like, yeah. Well, but um, yeah, esthetician. So I, I just, uh, and especially, of course, once I left that world, that was my kind of backup and just been doing it a long time. It's second nature because I love nutrition. I love health and, you know, it all relates. So especially during pandemic, I really, that's been a real happy place for me is doing Zoom classes and, and study. I have to study all the time. Every day, every week I have a class. I, I, like I have to study and I like it. It's what I enjoy too. If I want to check it out, if I want to share it with some friends, how do I do that today? I know you're getting the Amazon thing in the works, but right now. I can get it on Amazon. That's okay. it. Everybody wants to see it. And I don't, I don't know that side of the business and I kind of lost contact with the people that did it. So I, I don't even know if I'm allowed to, but. I paid for it. I'm going to try. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's great. Yeah, when that gets released, I'll have to have you back to see what the the public, I guess, uh, the, the the digital masses. I don't know. What do you say now in 2021? What do they think about the film? Uh, that would be great. But uh, I want to I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. Say it again? I'm nervous. Even, I'm nervous to even put it out there still, you know? Yeah, well, but... that makes it half the fun. Like, um... And not to make this about me, but like with, with comedy clubs being closed, I was trying to figure out how to make comedy work for me this year. Uh, I did a Zoom comedy thing. It's not the same. Uh, and one, one it, it, it's terrible. It's, it's one thing if you do a joke and it bombs, but it's another thing getting up in your living room and seeing all the red microphone slashes that the microphones are off and the cameras are off. You're like, I what know. am I doing this for? This sucks. I know. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I'm doing them. I'm doing them because I and I've told people just do them because I swear to God, when you get back in a club, it's going to make it all that much easier. Yeah, yeah. I see a wall of gray in these Zoom calls. It's like, it's, yikes. It's, but I'm doing them. I'm still like I'm do. I have two this week. I'm like, I respect yeah. that because I haven't. <laughs> I did one in October and I was like, okay. It wasn't, if a friend didn't ask me to do this, I cannot. <laughs> Some are, some are better than others, but yeah, I know. It's like no cameras, no microphone. And people just sit in there on their couch, like, yeah. if, they, if they do have the camera on, they're just like, you know, way too comfortable. It's so awful. <laughs> It's like 1984, man. Hunger Games. It, it sucks. Ooh. If someone hears you now and they want to become a follower to stalk you online the best possible way, how to go about doing that? I have a website where you could peek at information, prettyfunnynicole.com. But I think my best, I have a Facebook page. If you're, there are people that are just Facebook, so there's a Facebook page. Um, I'm terrible at accepting requests because I, you know, they it's too scary for me nowadays, but, um, Facebook page, uh, Instagram is my, one of my favorite Twitter. I love Twitter, especially these days. Yeah. Yeah. It's always fun to read those. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't mean to brag, but I've got three Twitter accounts. So okay, holla. <laughs> more than some people, but, um, <laughs> right, why not? Well, what pretty funny Nicole's the main one. Um, yeah, I have one for esthetician. I'm barely on, and then I have you know troll Nicole for <laughs> troll Nicole. I love it. <laughs> You're all wrong, you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening to New Amsterdam Radio. Learn more about the show at newamsterdam.com. That's K-N-E-W Amsterdam.com. Until next time, this city is yours.